Hi, I'm Charlie Nardozzi for the Gardener Supply Company. It's summer in the vegetable garden and everything is blooming and producing. But we're not the only ones who are really going to be enjoying these vegetables. Insect pests can make a mess of your vegetable garden in no time. They can attack your tomatoes, your squashes, and your cucumbers. So what are we going to do about them? Well, I've got an idea for you. I've got three different things you can do besides spraying that'll help control those pests so they don't become a problem in your garden. First of all, the best thing to do is grow a healthy garden. That means watering and fertilizing and mulching and weeding regularly. You can rotate your crops so you don't plant the same crop in the same place year after year. If you have some damaged plants from insects, pull them out. Sacrifice a couple plants so they don't spread to other plants. And finally, grow insect-resistant varieties. These are plants that'll stay healthy regardless of what kind of pests we have. But even if you do all those things, insect pests still can happen. So what are we going to do? You can spray, but sprays can cause problems in the environment. So let me tell you three different ways that you can control pests without having to spray. The first thing you could do is to hand pick the insects. This works really well, especially if you have a small container garden or raised bed garden. You go out every day and look for some of the pests. Now, some of them might be hard to find, like caterpillars. Look at this one on this tomato plant. This is a tomato hornworm. You can just pick it off, drop it into a pail of soapy water. That's the end of it. You can do the same technique with cabbage worms as well. You can also look at the bottoms of the leaves and look for egg masses. Once you identify what the eggs are supposed to look like, you can crush them or just pick them off. It could be Colorado potato beetles or even squash bug eggs. This is a good way to stop the population before it gets going. And then finally, you can pick the adults off, and we all know Japanese beetles. Just go out early in the morning, then pick them off, drop them into that same pail of soapy water. But you can do it also with asparagus beetles as well. So handpicking those eggs, those larvae, and the adults is a good way to stop those populations of insects before they cause the damage. The second technique is to use barriers. This fabric row cover works really well to block adult insects from laying eggs on the leaves of your plants. So you'd want to lay it over the plants using hoops like these super hoops or lower hoops, depending upon the plants you're growing. And it lets in water, light, and air, but it blocks the insects. It works really well for a number of different kinds of insects, such as leaf miners, cabbage worms, tomato hornworms, leek moths, and swede midges. Now, it won't work, though, uh, for cucurbit plants. And the reason is anything in the cucumber, melon, squash, and pumpkin family have male and female flowers, so they need cross-pollination. So if you're covering it over, the bees won't be able to get inside. So for those, you can cover them when they're young, but when they're older, pull the covers off and let the bees get in there to pollinate them so you can get those crops that you really like. So this is micromesh, and I like this one because you can put your hand under it and you can see how clear it is, so you can see anything going on underneath the netting, and you can just secure it with some clothespins. And the third technique is to use traps. Now you probably all know about the Japanese beetle traps, right? A lot of people have tried them and had a hard time using them. These are pheromone traps, meaning that they're a scent that attracts the beetle to them and they drop back into the bag. They work really well, maybe too well. But the biggest problem with these is that people don't use them properly. First of all, you've got to place them at least 30 feet away from your garden. Ideally, up to 100 feet away is even better. And it's best to trap en masse, meaning do a perimeter of traps around your property so as the Japanese beetles come in, they hit the trap before they hit your plants. When you're putting the Japanese beetle trap um, on a stake or on some kind of support, you want to make sure that it's only about a foot off the ground. That's the cruising altitude for Japanese beetles. You'll catch the most beetles if you use your trap this way. Another trap you can use is called the yellow sticky card. This is a simple yellow card with a Vaseline kind of sticky substance on it that you place just above cucumber plants and melon plants, primarily to catch cucumber beetles, but you also catch white flies and other flying insects too. So by using traps, barriers, and doing some hand picking, you can stay on top of all the insect pests in your garden. Now you may not get 100% of them each time, but you'll get enough of them so that your plants will thrive.